All right. Welcome this evening to the uh, UVM Extension New Farmer Project Webinar Planning for Profit, um, Pricing Strategies for Diversified Farmers. I'm Jesse Schmidt. I work with the UVM Extension New Farmer Project and my um, co-collaborator, uh, Beth Holtzman, I guess that, that's a well, anyway, so Beth Holtzman is here with me this evening as well. She's going to be chiming in. Um, she is the one who spearheaded our direct market pricing project, and um, she's going to be supporting me on this presentation this evening. So welcome, everybody. Um, So first, I just want to acknowledge our partners and sponsors. Um, we have a lot of uh, excellent um, partners on this project who've helped us uh, shape um, what we've been doing and offered input. Uh, the Vermont Vegetable and Berry Growers Association, the Northeast Organic Farming Association of Vermont, and the Far Vermont Farmers Market Association. And also, we couldn't do this without um, funding, of course. So we're very thankful to um, the Northeast Center for Risk Management Education um, out of the USDA and the USDA Risk Management Agency. And also, High Mowing Organic Seeds right here in Vermont has offered some uh, support for our direct market price reporting system. Them, um, and that's been really great. So I want to start just, uh, I want to hear a little bit um, about you guys, just to know where you're coming from. So using those letters um, down below the list of names, if you are an aspiring farmer, um, you can hit the letter A. Um, if you've been farming for under five years, um, go with B. Uh, five to nine years, um, you would be a C. And over 10 years, um, D. And if you're a service provider, you can hit D too. Just trying to see what, what we've got out there. All right, we've got a pretty even mix. Looks like a lot of service providers um, and some aspiring and, and pretty new farmers. So um, thanks for sharing that with me. And then I, I also want to get a sense of um, why you're, you're joining us here this evening. Um, I just saw from Ginger, um, there is no phone connection for this, uh, you're going to have to join, listen over the, your computer. Um, so, uh, so my next question was why, um, why you're at this presentation. So I'm wondering, um, go ahead and hit A if you are here because you're trying to price, you have a new enterprise or a new product and you're trying to come figure out what, um, what price you should have for that product. You could hit A. Anybody out there like that? Um, hit B if you are, okay, a lot of people with new products, that's good to know. Um, so hit B if you are um, not sure how to price your products so that you can sustain your farm while also be competitive. That would be B. Um, C would be if you are, you want to make your prices affordable to everyone, affordable to your community, you're um, in that realm. We have people with multiple things here. I see that's good to know too. Um, and, and go ahead and hit D if your prices are much higher than your competitors, if you're finding that you're all right, so it looks like we've got a good mix here of people who have new products and are trying to be sustainable and also price their products so that they're affordable to their community. So that's, that's good to know. So we're going to be addressing all of these issues. It's good to see. And if there's any other reasons why you might be out there, go ahead and um, while you're joining this presentation, please uh, type them in the chat box. I'd love to see um, what's bringing you to this presentation this afternoon, or this evening, sorry. So. Basically, um, pricing and profitability is uh, something that farmers struggle with. Um, and valuing farm products can be really complex. Um, the decisions are linked to your production costs, but they're also very strongly linked to um, the customers that you're marketing to, the demographics, the socio and economic status of your customers. Um, and also your scale of production, um, 
what you're producing and how you're differentiating yourself in the marketplace, um, and also what your values and philosophies are. Uh, those are all things that are going to be influencing your pricing. Um, and the fact of the matter is, is that, that markets are dynamic. Um, things are changing. Uh, constantly and sometimes rapidly, and it's, it's hard uh, to figure out always what the best price for your farm product should be. So finding the right price um, can be influenced by who you're marketing to um, and also where you're marketing. But when you really look at finding the right price, these four factors are um, all going to come into play. And most new farmers especially, and uh, most people in general, start by looking at what the competition is charging. Um, what, who are you competing with? What are their prices? And, um, and that is often used as information for finding a price. Also, what you know, customer expectations are, either knowing your customer expectations or the assumptions we make about our customers. Um, those influence price. Uh, two other factors that often come in later, um, but should come in right away, is really understanding what your costs of production are, um, how much uh, each product you're, you're producing, um, what all the factors are and all the costs that go into to bringing that to market. Um, and then also um, at the top, uh, what are your profit goals? What do you want to be bringing home at the end of the day as profit to your farm? Um, and that's a significant factor in figuring out what your prices should be and how you should be placing yourself in the market. So, most people start out uh, when they're trying to figure out the prices for their product with a market assessment. Um, and most people, uh, like I said, start out with what, uh, what are the competitors charging? Um, when you do this, it's really important to take, um, take a look critically at this uh, because what your competitors charging is going to be influenced by a lot of factors, um, including uh, what the range of products they're offering is, um, what the quality level of their products are, um, how is their customer service, um, what else might be included in the price? Are they doing deliveries? Are they um, you know, offering um, unique products that people can't get other places? Um, you know, there's a lot that's going, that's their marketing besides just the potato that you see before you. So, it's important to look at that, and also it's really important when you're comparing yourself to other farmers um, to keep other factors in mind, as such as how they differ from you. Um, where they're making their sales, right? So location, uh, as far as, you know, if they're in an urban market versus a rural market, um, if it's at a farm stand uh, versus a farmer's market, um, prices can be very different. The location of those sales really influences the size, uh, the price, the, the size of the operation and the experience level of the farmer, right? Scale, um, you, we always hear this term, economies of scale. Um, scale does influence how efficiently products can be produced, and that's often reflected in price. Um, also the experience level of the farmer. Um, the more experienced a farmer is, um, they tend to learn the tricks of the trade and efficiencies. Um, they may have invested in equipment that allows them to be more efficient, and again, um, that can be reflected in the price. Whether a farmer is specialized, um, you know, if they are selling, you know, 20 different varieties of garlic, uh, you know, they might have a, a niche in a marketplace um, and a specialization um, that influences their price. Um, the volume of sales, again, that goes a lot to scale. Um, and then, in general, you know, the market characteristics, um, you know, what, how they're placing themselves in, in the market. So, 
you know, when you're comparing those prices and looking at those prices and, and thinking about your own prices, understanding how that operation might be different from you and, uh, and factoring that in is really important. And another thing to keep in mind as you're looking at your competitors' prices is that uh, consumers are concerned about price, but that's not the only thing that matters to them. Um, and the better that you know and understand your customers, the better you'll be able to set appropriate prices uh, that reflect the things that they value. Um, so this is the next part of market assessment, is really drilling down to see what your customers expect. Um, and I am just, I'm sorry to take a pause here. I'm seeing some confusion about um, the phone. We do not have uh, a conference call set up for this webinar, so if you're trying to join by the phone, um, that's not going to work for you. Sorry about that. Um, let me. All right, um, so what is motivating your customers to buy? Who are you marketing to? What are, um, what are their values? Um, what are their alternatives? If they're not buying your product, where else might they get a similar product? Um, and how determined are they to buy from you? Um, so this is uh, often overlooked, um, really what the customer wants and what the customer expects. Um, and understanding that can help you understand uh, the prices that you may be able to set for your products. Um, and there are different ways to get this information. <clears throat> you can uh, do customer surveys. Um, a lot of people start by talking to friends and family, um, going to town meeting uh, if you're planning on marketing locally. Um, and then, you know, the computer, of course, is a wealth of information on uh, demographics for your area um, and uh, other useful information about the people that you might be marketing to. So. Um, Think about who that are, that audience is, who your your customers are going to be, um, and and find out about them. So once you've taken a look at your competition and you understand who you're going to be marketing to and your customers, um, what's equally, if not more important is really getting a strong understanding of your cost of production. Um, in order for you to be a sustainable farm, um, in order for you to keep farming into the future, um, you have to set prices that return um, a profit to you that allows you to keep farming. Um, Things that are commonly included in your cost of production are going to be your materials, your supplies, your overhead, you know, contributing to uh, land and tractor payments, um, labor, uh, replacement costs for yourself if you happen to be taken out of the picture because of injury or illness for a while, um, and a whole host of other things. And even if you're not trying to live off your farm income yet, it's still important to make sure that you understand your cost of production so that you're pricing your products appropriately. Underselling doesn't do your customers or your community any favors. Um, it's only going to make it harder for people who are trying to make a living farming um, to compete. So when you're calculating your cost of production, um, you're looking at all of the factors that that go into producing your product. And it's important to realize that you don't have to do everything at once. Um, start out with a key enterprise. Uh, this might be um, the enterprise that currently is, you have the highest volume of sales. Um, or it might be something that has, is right now taking most of your uh, 
time, um, your labor time. Uh, but you can start with just one enterprise. And sample budgets uh, can be found um, if you don't have your own record, sample budgets can be found. They're called enterprise budgets. They can be found online um, on many different sites. Um, you can also uh, do your own estimates based on um, what you know your inputs are. But the most important thing is that you can be very detailed in this, um, or you can start out with a general budget. But quality and accuracy is the most important factor in developing uh, a cost of production. Um, and as you grow as a farmer and as you learn more about your production methods and the inputs, um, your budgets can be become more detailed. But understanding this cost of production is going to basically help you understand what your break-even cost is. Um, and once you know that, then you have a much better understanding of what a sustainable price will be for your farm, for your farm products. So here's some examples of um, different things that can be included in enterprise budgets. Um, it's important to think about, you know, field prep all the way to market. Um, you know, the cost of cultivating your fields, um, the cost of the gas that it takes you to get to market, your time involved in selling at market, um, and as well as all the input costs that we think of as far as, you know, fertilizer and potting soil and things like that. Um, and then there are those overhead costs as well. And most farmers, as they move uh, into really looking at the financial sustainability of their farm, they're really going to be looking at enterprises that contribute to what are called overhead or fixed costs. So um, a portion of your mortgage or uh, your tractor payments, um, electricity bill, um, computer and internet connections so that you can do your marketing. Those are all generally considered overhead costs. And you want to be uh, include those costs uh, when you're evaluating your enterprises so that you uh, can make sure that your enterprises are covering all the costs that go towards um, making your farm profitable. Um, and I see some conversations over here about um, enterprise budgets. And uh, on our direct market um, pricing website, we do have some links to enterprise budgets. Um, and uh, it looks like there's some good information uh, shooting around here. Rutgers has many uh, crop. Uh, Penn State has some good crop enterprise budgets as well. Um, and if you Google, if you start Googling what you're looking for, um, I, most, I have pretty good luck. Um, that's also great. Richard Wiswall's book, if people haven't seen that, it's the um, Organic uh, Farmer's Business Handbook. He has a whole CD of enterprise budgets um, at the back of his book um, that include both uh, figures that he has used. Um, so if you don't have any records yet, you're an aspiring farmer, you're just trying to get baseline costs, you can use other people's figures. Uh, and his book has those, um, his estimates on time and cost for all sorts of different inputs for growing carrots, growing potatoes. Um, but then he also has blank templates. Uh, so you can fill in your cost based on your research. You know, you call up Johnny's and find out, you know, how much 50 pounds of seed potato is going to cost you. You can put your own numbers in there and come up with your own enterprise budget. And again, this is going to take all of the expenses that go into creating, um, into growing a crop, and then uh, you put in what you estimate your volume of production is going to be and what price you're going to charge. And it's going to tell you pretty quickly whether um, you are making a profit or not. So, Jesse, this, can you hear me? Yeah. So, um, one of the one I of can. the things about using um, enterprise budgets or um, figures that are you find on the internet, they give you a good sense of um, 
average or industry norms, um, but <coughs> there might be circumstances where your cost of production might be significantly different from um, that average or the norm because of your partic the particular characteristics of what you're doing. And so, um, so it's really important to understand that's going back um, to when Jesse was talking about understanding the difference between um, you and your competition. Um, it's really important to take a hard look at that and you might want to make adjustments. You might know, for example, that um, you're just not as efficient um, or you don't get the conversion if you're looking at um, you know, a feed to um, to slaughter weight um, in an animal that is um, what the enterprise budget is based on. So um, they're a really good starting point if you don't have your own numbers, um, but it's worth taking some time to think about how you might be the same or different from those numbers. And another point, and that's a really good point, thanks for bringing that up, because another thing to take a close look at um, as, as you are getting this information, um, is uh, look at when the enterprise budget was created, what year it was created. Um, there are some really old enterprise budgets floating around there, and they might be really great for give, giving you an idea of the category of expenses that you might have for each enterprise, um, but the actual numbers that are in there could be quite outdated. Um, and then the other uh, factor to look at is the region um, that created the enterprise budget. Um, and again, it doesn't mean that those enterprise budgets aren't useful, but if you're looking at an enterprise budget that was created for the Northwest or the Southeast, um, their production methods um, are going to vary as well as uh, a lot of their costs. So um, those are two other factors to, again, look critically at this information. Um, and the, really the best thing to do is to use these as a guide um, as to what kind of expenses you can expect um, in any given enterprise, and then go and do your research and find out what your own numbers are. Um, based on what these people, you know, are saying are common expenses for growing different crops or raising different kinds of animals. Would you mind um, if I jumped in one more so, time, Jesse? Yeah. So another thing to think about is a lot of times in enterprise budgets, marketing costs are kind of all lumped in and they don't distinguish between um, what it costs to go to farmer's market versus at your farm stand. They're not necessarily direct market oriented and those costs for direct market farmers might be significant costs and they might be different depending on which market you're taking the same crop or product to. Um, so, so that's another thing for you to think about as you're, as you're developing these or working with them. Yeah. And so, once you understand this, this cost of production, the next uh, really important factor before you start determining your, your prices is really based on what you project your income to be, um, you know, with all of your uh, different enterprises, um, you're, you are projecting a certain amount of, of income. Um, what do you want your profit to be? What do you need your profit to be um, to give you a livable wage, to be able to reinvest in your farm, to do whatever you feel like that, that profit needs to do? Um, and in putting that profit um, as a kind of on a pedestal, something to protect um, as you go through um, considering what prices you should set for your products. Um, and profit, the amount that you need to profit from your enterprises is again going to vary widely depending on, you know, whether you have off-farm income, um, whether this is your, your sole income for your, you know, yourself and your family. Um, it's going to, those profit goals are going to vary um, a lot between farms, but it's really important to know what those profits are and to set those um, aside ahead of time. Um, 
so that you're not just taking whatever happens to be left over at the end of the year, which is how a lot of people operate. You know, you, you bring in the money, you spend the money, and then if there's something left over at the end of the year, you, you know, you pat yourself on the back. And if there's not, you scratch your head and say, geez, what happened? Um, so the hope here is that you, you plan out what you want your profit to be ahead of time so that, uh, so that it doesn't get lost um, when, when you're out there in the marketplace. So once you know your cost of production um, and have some idea of the price range for your products based on you know, your market analysis, um, the pricing strategy that you're going to use may be clear. Um, and some of these may sound really familiar to you. Uh, so I'm just going to go over different pricing strategies. Um, competitive pricing is uh, you see this um, a lot at farmers markets, um, and basically it's it's based on undermining competition with a lower price. Um, so, um, you know, some farm people at farmers market call this crop dumping. Someone comes in with you know a ton of corn and they sell it really cheap, and no one else can compete with that price. Um, this is a pretty difficult strategy to maintain. Um, it's usually only successful for large and well-capitalized businesses and only for a short period of time. Constantly underselling your competition, um, and especially when you don't have a really firm understanding of your profit goals or your cost of production, um, is a pretty quick way to put yourself out of business. Um, because generally, there's a reason uh, why your competition um, has set their prices um, at a certain level. And if you're constantly just underselling them, you're not only you know, making it harder for them to market their products, but you're probably making it hard for you to be s sustainable as well. Um, the idea of relative pricing um, is something uh, that often is a, a strategy for new farmers. You come in, you look, and you see uh, what your what the the relative prices are in the marketplace, and you price yours a little bit higher, a little bit lower, or you just match the prices. Um, and that kind of pricing, you're you're placing yourself in the marketplace. Um, you are putting your products as you know maybe you set them a little bit higher because you're really going to market on quality or you're just going to match because that's the best you can do right now and so you're just going to match everybody else's prices until you get a firmer handle on what your cost of productions are but um, basically you're you're just looking at the marketplace and and pricing based on that. Um, when you use this strategy, it really is important to think about how how are you distinguishing yourself from um, the other uh, farmers in the marketplace. What? How are you setting your products apart? Um, contract uh, pricing is when you um, s sell your products in advance for a set price. Um, this uh, is, you know, basically a CSA model would be a contract. You agree uh, to sell your farm goods at a set price at the beginning of the season. Um, you see this uh, sometimes with co-ops um, or if you're selling wholesale to grocery stores, um, you agree, you know, might sign a contract at the beginning of the season. This has the benefit of, you know, there's a lot of security uh, in this, knowing that your product has a market, knowing what the price is going to be. Um, and knowing what volume you're going to be able to move. Um, but the, there are also risks to this strategy as well. Um, when you have a set price like this, if your expenses uh, vary dramatically um, because of various factors, um, then you, are, you lose your profit margin pretty quickly in, in this kind of situation. And, uh, we saw farmers in this kind of circumstance who had pre-sold their meat at a certain price per pound um, using a CSA model, but then um, over the season, grain prices went up very, um, grain prices went up significantly, and also slaughter costs, uh, slaughter and, 
and butchering costs went up. And so farmers lost their profit margin uh, when those expenses went up like that. So uh, it's important if you're going to use this strategy to understand the risks and perhaps um, think about how you can protect yourself, how you can uh, buffer yourself in these kinds of situations if your expenses do change. Um, as people begin to understand their marketplace uh, more thoroughly and again understanding those costs of production, flexible pricing um, comes into play. And that's uh, pricing that varies based on the time of year, um, who the customer is, might even be the time of day, um, but prices are changing um, in response to market conditions um, and what what your production levels are, um, but it's all based around your break-even price. Um, most experienced farmers will never go below their break-even cost. They're not going to give, because that's essentially giving your product away. Um, it's better to donate the product um, or you know, feed it to your chickens or uh, put it on the compost pile. Um, because when you start selling product below your cost of production, you're setting up um, your customers to expect um, prices for products that are really not sustainable for your farm. So um, the flexible pricing can work really well um, as long as you understand what that cost of production is. Um, so another strategy that uh, farmers use, this cost-oriented um, oriented strategy, is that you understand what your costs are and you just do a straight markup for everything. Um, that might be you know, 20% or 40%. You see this often in retail establishments that they have a set markup for all of their products. Um, and that's what they figured they need to maintain their oper operation. And you can do the same thing um, if you understand what your costs of production are and you know what your pro you need your profits to be for your farm to be sustainable, then you could have a set markup for all of your products. Now, this obviously um, works to the extent that the market will bear. Um, and it also has to do with what your customers, um, how well your customers know you, how loyal your customer base is, and, um, and what other things, what other values and uh, and ideas that you're bringing um, to the market when you're selling your products. So, um, and these last three are, uh, you know, skimming um, that pricing strategy is basically if you have a unique product, something that's new, something that is sought after, um, it might be unique in the marketplace that for a limited time you might have the opportunity to price that product high um, and because of the demand you'll be able to uh, return um, profits to the startup of that enterprise much more quickly. Um, and that's it's like skimming the cream. Um, you can do that, but you have to also realize that that is going to be a limited time <laughs> uh, opportunity that most likely someone else will come into the marketplace. Um, you will start having competition, and you're going to have to adjust your prices accordingly. Um, and Penetration is basically when you have it, it's a promotional price, um, new product, you want to expose people to it, you might do some kind of special or deal to introduce them to the product, um, again, for a limited time. Um, and product line is when, you know, this might be a situation if you are offering a variety of products, um, you know, that allow people to purchase at different um, places on the the price scale. So um, generally it's when people have value-added products and, and, and things like that. Um, so there's a, you know, a high cost item, a medium cost item, and a low cost item. Um, and it allows customers in different uh, kind of income scales to enter into the market um, for your products. So So once you have a pricing strategy, um, you're going to get out there and you're going to 
see, you know, if your products sell, um, and whether those prices, um, whether the market will bear, bear those prices. Um, so, when sales or profits don't meet your expectations, um, here are some things to think about. Um, is pricing too high relative to the customer's value perceptions? Um, you know, failing to modify prices to reflect changes in costs. Um, you know, so expenses go up, uh, but you don't raise your prices. Um, that can significantly Im influence your profits. Um, Attempting to compete on price alone, so not understanding your cost of production and just uh, competing uh, with your neighbor based on price. Um, and again, one of the farmers that I was talking to the other day said that, you know, when he when a product isn't moving, um, when his sales uh, at farmers market aren't. Uh, what he expected. He said the first thing that he does is he rearranges his display. He said before he touches his price, he he places that product in a different place. He puts it next to something else, or he repackages it. He puts it, um, you know, there's a different, a lot of different ways to market different products. But um, but that's the first thing he does is you know he tries to put that product in a different place um, in the customer's eyes. Um, so it's important before, you know, I think a common thing is just to start lowering the price, but start to think about how, how can you market this product differently? What is going to attract the customer and how can you bring the customer's attention to this, this product? Um, so there's a lot of things to reflect on here. Um, and as you're going um, in the marketplace, one of the most important things um, to consider is monitoring your prices and monitoring your sales um, so that when you're in these situations, you're not just at the end of the year finding out um, what happened. As you're going through on a weekly basis, you're seeing are your sales meeting your targets? Um, and if they're not, what can you do to change that? And that might mean changing price, but it also just might mean changing markets or changing how you're marketing. Um, so if your prices are on the low side of what you're seeing, um, here's some things to consider. Uh, are you underselling your product? Um, are you accounting for everything uh, in when you're figuring out your cost of production? Are you really ac accounting for everything? Um, are you paying yourself a wage? Are you paying yourself a livable wage? Um, are you planning for growth and reinvestment um, in your farm? You know, are you considering that your equipment is depreciating and that you should, uh, you know, a common thing is to have uh, to be putting money aside to replace equipment. Is that part one of the costs that you're considering? So. Um, it's another uh, aspect to consider when you're pricing your products to make sure that um, all of these things are being considered. So if your prices are higher than what you're seeing, um, examine your costs. Uh, are there inefficiencies? Um, are there limitations? Um, can you overcome those limitations in uh, producing your product. Um, can you change your product in some way? Uh, offer alternative units. Um, bundle that product with other products um, to encourage sales. You know, just uh, changing where it's located in your farm stand or in your farmer's market display. Um, and consider changes to your market or your tar target audience. If you are not competitive um, at the market that you're in, what might be some alternative markets that you could consider? Where could you reach a customer that would be willing to pay the price that you need to set to be sustainable? Um, so 
our goal is to help farmers, uh, one of our goals is to help farmers share information about um, what they're charging at uh, at markets and to create um, a database of information that farmers could use to keep tabs on the marketplace um, so that they can set prices that are fair to consumers while also supporting farm profitability. Um, right now the focus is on produce, uh, most of, mostly vegetables and berries and some culinary herbs. Um, we have a goal to include livestock products and more fruit and herbs and value-added products, um, but we haven't gotten there yet. So, um, but this is a great resource and I'm just going to take you here really quickly. And so you should see on your screen um, the opening page. And I think I'm actually already logged in here. So if you go to um, the web page, can I see some smiley faces if people are seeing the web page? It should say view prices. All right. So if you register on this website, um, um, and it's really easy, you just uh, have to give a little bit of democratic uh, demographic information and uh, your name and make a password. Um, and then you will be able to uh, view price reports. So here's the price report from uh, the end of October. And it has the number of reports, uh, the average, median, um, and uh, min and max uh, prices for that product. Um, and so this, again, is going to give you uh, an idea of what's being charged out there. What is the range of prices and, and what is the average price? Um, so it's a pretty handy tool. Um, as more people begin using this uh, site and registering their own farm prices, um, this tool is going to become even more useful because you will be able to actually search by county and look within your specific county to see what the price um, people are, are charging or look specifically by crop. So there's going to be different sorting mechanisms. So we encourage, um, even if you're a new farmer and you're not sure about your prices, we encourage everybody to get online and, and get registered and report prices um, for this upcoming season so that we could create a really robust database. Uh, and Beth just made a point that um, the, the prices are for markets within Vermont, um, but a farm could be located in an adjacent state. So um, if you're joining us from out of state, you could definitely use the price reports. And if you're marketing in Vermont, you could still report your prices. Um, and reporting your prices is, um, is pretty easy. Um, you basically choose your sales location and what your market type is, and then um, and then there uh, are places to um, input your prices. So uh, we try to make it as user friendly as possible, and we hope um, that people uh, will join in. And yeah. So um, one of the things that um, is pretty cool, if you are a reporter, um, anybody can get the price report that Jesse showed. That was the PDF. But if you report your prices at least once, um, then you have access to being able to manipulate the data and go in and um, hone in a little bit more on exactly what you want to compare to um, in terms of geographic location and um, the kind of market. Um, the other thing is that all the data that is being um, reported in this survey um, is kept confidential for you and those price reports would be there. Um, for example, if you reported in May of 2010, when you come in in May of 2011 or 2011, 2012, you, would be, you could see your previous early May report and just update that. Um, you could use it as a way to keep track of what you've charged in the past and you only have to do minor updates when you go in.
so we did, again, it, it, we did try to make it as, as easy as possible because we know people are busy and um, entering this kind of information. The other thing we uh, have been encouraging people is you don't have to enter prices for every crop. Um, you can just enter prices for the crops that are most important to you. Just put in, you know, tomatoes and salad greens and garlic um, and report your prices over the season. So it's really up to you how you use this and um, how much information you share. But again, the, the collective uh, use of this is really going to make it more useful for everybody. Um, so we hope you'll check it out. One more thing about it, it's um, the website is mobile compatible, so if you have a smartphone, you can use it from your smartphone. So, basically we're ready for questions. Um, next steps, there are some great resources on the website. Um, we encourage you to report prices. Um, start working on some enterprise budgets and figuring out those costs of production and um, understanding your market and who you're marketing to. Um, and uh, we also have the opportunity for uh, people who live in Vermont or close enough to Vermont to drive. We are having two um, clinics, uh, day-long clinics on pricing strategies and creating pricing plans. Um, the first one's going to be March 15th here in Berlin, Vermont, and our March 20th, um, we're going to figure out that location soon. Um, but to get more information or to sign up for the pricing clinics, you can go to that website that's listed there. Um, and if anybody has any questions, um, we'd be happy to take them now. You can put them in the chat box. and. Um, and thanks for joining us this evening. I'm glad you guys have enjoyed the webinar. It looks like we're getting some, some thanks. And Yeah, suggestions about pricing, um, approaching farmers if they are pricing too low. Um, that is really, uh, really tough. And um, I was just having a conversation this weekend with farmers about it. And I think one thing is to, um, again, really understand where they might be coming from. Um, you know, again, understanding your competition. Their cost of production might be very different than yours, um, given different circumstances. Uh, uh, but I think it is fair if you see people really pricing below um, a, sustain a sustainable cost to um, have a conversation with them about it and explain to them that, that you're you know, trying to make a living farming and um, and ask them how they're coming to their price. You know, I think that would be a great place to start is asking um, asking them how they came to their price and finding out what information they're using to come to that price, um, uh, and then that might spark a conversation um, about those costs of production. And maybe they'll have some great efficiency tips for you, or maybe you'll be able to educate them about cost of production and how important it is uh, to understand that. So um, it, it can be tricky territory, but I, um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, so here's a question. What are the best resources for finding out emerging profitable enterprises for new farmers? Um, I would, you know, quite honestly, I feel like some of the best places to learn about those things are at um, grower conferences. Uh, there's a lot of uh, information, a lot of research is uh, presented. So right here in Vermont, we're having a grain growers conference uh, soon. and. Um, we just, NOFA Vermont just had their winter conference. The Vermont Veg and Berry Growers Association just had their conference. And often at these conferences, um, 
research is presented about emerging um, emerging crops. So that's one place. Um, also, uh, you know, keeping your eye on the national market and what consumer trends are, um, what people are interested in. Um, you know, that's another way. There's no one website to go to. Um, I think it's more getting into the farmer networks in your area and um, the production networks that might be in your area um, and, and starting to, to talk to people and, um, and, and, edu and educate uh, yourself about what's going on. Um, so what is a fair way to price to a co-op versus a farm stand price? Um, right now I'm giving them 50% off, but I feel that I'm not meeting my profit margin. Um, so is, are you selling to a farm stand, or is this your own farm stand, Trish? Um, generally, there is a discount when you're selling, uh, when, when farmers are selling to a wholesale outlet. Um, there is a, a discount off of the retail price. Um, and, but how much that is, again, it's going to come to your, down to your cost of production. And if, if you uh, can't, if it is cutting too much of your profit margin, um, if you don't have the capacity to um, market your products at a price that the, the co-op uh, will accept, then maybe wholesaling really isn't a good market for you right now. Uh, maybe focusing on retail and trying to get as much of that consumer dollar as you can is, is your best strategy. Um, another thing might be to uh, look, you know, when you're selling to different markets, um, you know, there are efficiencies involved. And so uh, that discount might be made up in the fact that you don't have to drive to market or you're selling a larger volume at one time. And oftentimes that uh, does make a difference for farmers and that's what, why they're offering that kind of a discount to a co-op or a farm stand. But if they're not buying a large volume from you or, um, or enough variety of products to make your delivery to them worthwhile, then it'd be important to reconsider that as a market for you. So there's a a lot of factors to go involved. I think what's fair really depends on your operation and what your costs of production are. Um, let's see. So am, am I on here? Yeah. Uh, so Leela, I it, my reply was to your resources question about the um, sort of market opportunities, and I'm looking for it, but I'm not sure I'm going to find it before the webinar ends. <clears throat> but if you email me, um, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to everybody who wants it. Yeah, so if you do put your email address um, in the chat box here, we can send you some follow-up information. Um, and if you want that email only to be viewed by us, uh, you can, uh, under the, where you type in the chat, it says send, and you can say to moderators, and then only Beth and I will see that email. Um, and uh, yeah, and so you know that report, the co-ops were really looking at where the gaps in their local production, um, local products were, and that, that was a really interesting uh, link that Beth is talking about. So um, here is a question. Uh, will enterprise or full cost analysis charts be available to the public so the consumers are learning the actual cost of production? Um, yeah, so this is really, so they're really, and this question is really addressing consumer education and the need for consumer education and, um, and having consumers understand cost of production. And I think that is, as a, direct marketing farmer, that is one of the um, biggest assets you have uh, that larger um, sellers of, of products don't have, which is this direct connection to your consumer, to the people who are buying your products. And, um, and taking that opportunity, um, you know, some farmers, uh, practice open book management where, and uh, I see this, I've seen this often with CSAs, where they show their CSA members what 
the the books are for the farm. Um, they share a budget report so that the their CSA customers understand what the costs of production are and what how much money the farmers actually um, making in the whole endeavor, and that can be really eye opening um, for customers um, and a, a good tool for them to understand that the value that they're really getting when they're purchasing products from you. Um, so that's kind of an extreme example, kind of opening up your books, but you can also do some really simple education for your um, to the customers of your products, um, you know, just sharing with them what, uh, you know, the grain costs are or how much labor um, is involved in, in raising the animals that you're selling. Um, that's a real opportunity and I think when customers um, understand that, uh, then they not only understand the price but they also value the product differently because they really see the heart and the sweat um, equity that's been invested in, in those products. Um, all right. Well, I think that's everything and I hope that answered some of your questions and uh, definitely um, take the opportunity to look at some more of the resources and um, feel free to email us with any questions you have or resources you're looking for. We can always be reached at uh, newfarmer at uvm.edu. Um, so feel free to grab our email and be in touch with us and thanks a lot everybody. <laughs>